okay? The lesson we're going into tonight, we hope through the Spirit of the Most High that it, that it resonates through. We, we pray to Ahia and the Most High uh, and His son Yeshaya. We ask them to, uh, to help us through this and that this information, if researched, can help free our people. And uh, it's only the will of the Father, only the Most High have the power to, to release us from our prisons. But all in all, you know, we're going to do our best to bring it out and may it fall on those who understand. Like Yeshaya say, he that have an ear, let him hear. Um, as you know, for years we did research on the name of the Most High. And uh, when we received the name, it was before the research. I want to put that out there. Uh, brothers fasted through fasting and prayer for some days. The Most High's name was revealed. And once it was revealed, we had to proclaim the name. The research after the Most High revealed his name was done after we knew it. It was in the early, uh, it was like uh, two, the year 2000, 2001. And we kept the name until, you know, we, we taught the people we knew in our circle, but YouTube and the other outlets of the in internet allowed us to speak it on a broader level to let everyone know what the Most High revealed. At first, we were hesitant with, with bringing it forth. We were just take, teaching about what was going on in the earth and proclaiming the, the coming of our Lord and letting everyone know who was against us. And the fact that in order to fight this battle, we must wake up and come together as a people. Eventually, we had to bring forth the name. Now, it was two things. Number one, and I'm going to speak of this in a few moments, you know, if the Most High permit. At that time, you have to realize, at this time, I grew up along with brothers in the early 90s uh, as a young man, uh, as an Israelite, from the brothers up in New York. And, you know, we got high up in there, you know, uh, I was, I was a so-called general up in there uh, of high shield through the spirit of the Most High at that time. And at that time, according to the ancient Phoenician, I said his name was Yahweh. Now I said his name was Yahweh because that's what our teachers taught us. And if someone would have put a gun to my head at that time and asked me to denounce that name, I would not have done it because I believe that was the God that revealed the truth to us. But no. See, the Most High worked with us before the womb. Okay, he worked with us before we ran into anything. We, we were with Christ in the beginning. He told the disciples, I will bring all things to your remembrance and that ye was with me in the beginning. So we can't stay claimed or try to say that our walks of life can be attributed to one part of our life. The Most High was there. That's for all of us from the beginning. But this is the journey. Um, there was other things within the doctrine that I didn't know. You know, I was just happy to know that I was an Israelite at that time. At this time, uh, I would have defended the teachings of reincarnation. And I'm, put, I'm putting this personal testimony out so people will know that all the doctrine that's out there, we've been there. 
Okay, I know exactly all the teachings that they teach on this because I've taught it and I would and I put, put my life on the line defending it. Okay, but it takes a certain level of, of humbling to say, you know what? All right, I, you know, that's what I thought was right at that time. But once you learn something true, you either stand with truth or become a man pleaser and just stay in a lie. At this time, if someone would have told me at that time, if someone would have told me that baptism shouldn't be with water, I mean, it should be with water, I would have argued them down in the early 90s. Why? Because we was teaching according to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, that, that the washing is the water of the word. So there was no physical water baptism. Now, this is not an attack on other people. I'm just letting you know the journey that we have experienced, that I've experienced, because it's paramount that we can take you through this journey so there's no argument when it comes to doctrine and understanding. So these are things the Most High took us through. Okay, um, and that was in the early 90s. And then the Most High, through the Spirit, revealed other information. Okay, baptism is correct because Christ was baptized. And one thing about the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine of truth, when it, when it comes to the Bible, this is how any of you brothers and sisters know if something is true or false. If someone changed from what was originally taught in any doctrine, it will not stand. It's not the truth. If someone will have to come to you with one doctrine and say, well, listen, the light is getting brighter or there's a change based on this then that means the foundation wasn't on Christ from the beginning I'm saying this because in the early 90s those that was teaching that there wasn't a hell started teaching there was a hell and then it came with the argument okay if there's a hell then how is reincarnation doctrine if there's a hell Think about that because the Bible says it is given unto man once to die in Hebrews and then the judgment. So if you're judged in Hades and you're waiting for your change, that means if you're waiting in bosom, the bosom of Abraham for Christ to return and change you, how can you be born back again when you have to be judged based on the life that you had within this earth? The Most I don't give you chances over and over again to come back. This is all we have. I found that out. And I found out that Satan wants us to believe that we have many lives so he can take the life you have. So you can be deceived and tricked into losing everything. When I say everything is deeper than your body, is deeper than this outward thing. It's, it's called your spirit, which is eternal. And that's what the fallen one is after. Now, going into the most important part, because the biggest pushback we received when we started teaching, it wasn't the, the, the flea Babylon thing, okay? The most I say is come out of my people. And listen, there's Israelites every place. So going from one place to another place is not against the law of the most high. The most high said come out of my people, all right? It's up to the individual themselves to make a decision on whether or not they believe they can stay where they are or get up and leave. We're not forcing no one. We've never said you, come, you, you can be with us or none of that. Or we're here to lead you and guide you out. None of that. We proclaim what the Most High said do. So the biggest pushback is not coming out of Babylon. Even though there is some pushback there, let me tell you, the biggest pushback we received since teaching this word was when we began, our biggest attack is when we began to proclaim the true name of the Most High. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. 
because like myself, all the Israelites that were within America and around the world were deceived through the Tetragrammaton. They were deceived by the Jewish Masoretes, and I have proof of it. I have dates, and I have the name they gave you. We called on it. See, these people operate hundreds of years in advance under the Illuminist powers. Jacob lost their identity. Esau, leading these secret societies, didn't lose his. So he knew, according to prophecy, because he had our records, he knew that one day the children of Israel would awaken. He knew, regardless of their programming and their biological attacks and their smearing and destruction, that there's, there's one prophecy that they could not keep from the children of Israel for those who seek it. He knew that the Most High would begin to awaken his people. So he thought, he, he figured that he would put a trap in place, a hundreds of years, or thousands of years, a thousand years in advance, so that when we do begin to wake up, it'll lead us back into a circle. It'll lead us back to their God. And we was all deceived, me included, all of us. So I'm, what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm saying, listen, brothers, outside of everything, brothers and sisters, we, we're beseeching you. Take the research that we're going to give you tonight. First of all, before you take the research, pray to the Most High. Pray to the God that guided you into whatever religion you were in before you found out you were Israel. Pray to that God because he was the one that guide, guided you to this point. In, in spite of the name we were calling him. Because he understand, according to Acts 17 and 30, in time past he winked at our ignorance. But now command all men everywhere to repent. When we were ignorant, the Most High could not accuse us or go against us in our ignorance. Because we were just calling on the only God we knew. But what excuse do we have once the truth is presented to you? What excuse do you have? And see, you can't attribute this to a man because me or anyone else in this earth, because the Most High is setting his people free, and he proclaimed his name throughout all generations, and he gave his name to the children of Israel before he saved them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Which is blessed according to the Most High and blessed to be able to share it with you so that you can make a choice whether or not you want to stay in bonds or stay a part of the trickery or stand with your brothers as Israel and come back to our God and call on our God, not separate but together. One of the biggest pushbacks we received is because you got brothers, especially Benjamites, calling on Jah. Now understand why they were calling on Jah or Yah. You have to realize after being afflicted and destroyed by the Europeans, now there's a doctrine that's coming that's pro-black. They would rather call on something that they feel relates to them in color opposed to the European lifestyles that was imposed that came with their captivity. They wanted to reject the God of the Europeans and when when Bob Marley came and brought Rastas, that was the alternative for the Benjamites. Okay, at least it was something pro-black that they could revolt against their slave masters spiritually. Yes, that was a step. It was leading into the children of Israel and the understanding. But they got trapped into a higher deity. And we're going to prove that. When we were coming up, and learn the truth. In Philadelphia, you have the Jewish Society uh, uh, publications. It's in Philadelphia, where I once lived. And that's where they print their Masoretic text that they distribute throughout the United States. I went down there when I found the truth, and I actually bought Taurus. I bought a Torah scroll that you can roll. I also had a Tanakh, I had a New Testament, I had everything. 
and I noticed that it said Masoretic text. But back then, I was so happy to be reading the Hebrew, understanding the Hebrew. I never really understood the, the, the importance of knowing who was delivering the text to us. You understand? I didn't question these people called Masoretes because I had no idea who they were. I mean, I just came out of the Christian church. I was so glad to know I was Israel. And I was glad also to now be reading our ancient records. Or what I thought was our ancient records. The majority of it was, but I found out that the Masoretes changed the name of the Most High. And it was right there, clear, in your face the whole time. But because we were upholding a God based on our elders, or what you would call the chief high priest. Because we was upholding that particular name, we just ignored what was in our face the whole time. Even those who could understand the Hebrew ignored what the Most High told Moses. It was right there in the verses that we were reading it, even on the Sabbaths we were reading it, and totally ignored it. And then you have other groups out there. You have to realize the people, our elders that came from the early 50s and 60s and the 20s, these brothers were, were, were black, children of black slaves converted into Judaism. So there was a high number of our people, which were black Israelites, who were actually believing in the same God of the Jewish people, of the Jewish people in Israel today. Was that right? You're going to find out that the same people that gave you Christianity gave you Judaism also. And because now you could relate yourself to the children of Israel, you thought that was it. But the deception is in layers. It's higher. The higher you go, the greater the deception. And you're going to find that at the pinnacle is the all C and I. He's at the top of it all. He understood we would wake up. So you know what he did? He threw our elders a bone. Christ didn't make no mistake when he says, listen, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Just because you came first doesn't mean you're going to finish the race. It doesn't mean just because you've been teaching and you got a beard hitting the ground and you've been teaching since the 30s and 40s. It doesn't mean that the Most High cannot use a younger man at any, at any interval to become greater because the Bible says in Daniel that knowledge would increase. We have access to more information right now at the tip of our fingers than our elders had their whole lives. You know how much, how much they would have to pay in books to get the information that's readily available to us now? People looked at Christ because he was so young. Like, who is he? Who's this new Jack? Who's these disciples? We don't know about this. And looked at him and, and was condescending against him because he was so young and coming against him. Why? Because he wasn't part of the pharisaical eldership. Okay? He wasn't known. He was just a, a layman. He was just a carpenter's son, a young man. What can he teach people who was keeping the tradition of the elders? Same thing now. You get people who come up now with some new information and everybody looking at us like, well, what's going on? Where this name come from? Where's this doctrine coming from? I think I've heard that before when you, read, when you read the Bible. Read the New Testament. What is this new doctrine? The doctrine is the truth. And I'll tell you what. I want this to be proclaimed throughout the four corners of the earth. Even if you don't like us personally or whatever the case is, put that to the side. Go over this information that we're going to give you this evening. And if you can prove what we're saying is wrong. If you can prove this history that we're about to bring through tonight is wrong. Here's our word. We will make a public proclamation and apologize for us bringing anything that was false and bring the information you prove to be true. And we'll, and, and we'll make that proclamation. 
beyond any shadow of a doubt. But if you find that what we're bringing is true, then that's between you and the Most High. You got brothers that was from the past that was teaching that his name was Jehovah. And then they were saying Christ's name was Yehoshua. And we said, listen, no. That's not the Most High's name. His name ain't Jehovah. And Christ's name is not Yehoshua. Christ's name is Yeshia. And then others came and say, well, that sounds like Isaiah's name. And we came back and say, well, Yehoshua, that sounds like Joshua's name. So just because someone have a similar or close to a name of another person doesn't mean it's false. Do the research going to the Hebrew. If we're going to proclaim truth, let's proclaim truth all the way. Because the deception is, is, goes well beyond the slave ships. Okay, the gig is up. Everyone know that we're Israel now. We're out, we off the slave ships. Now what? Now, now the deception is doctrinal now. It's doctrinal. You got some people that don't believe in Christ. Some people that don't believe that Paul was a disciple. Some people that just want to deal with the Old Testament. Okay, and we say, listen, if you don't believe in Christ, you condemned already. So if you don't want to believe in Christ, it doesn't matter if you know the name of the Most High or not. Because if you don't believe in the Son and is willing to get baptized and be covered by his blood, the name of nothing at all. But those that are in Christ who understand the importance of truth and will stand against adversity, even if you are the minority, those that do that, you're coming through the straight gate. Now I'm going to prove beyond any shadow of a doubt, number one. And I'm going to get some sources. Number one, I'm going to prove that Jehovah or Yahweh or Yehovah cannot be the Most High's name. And then I'm going to prove that that name belongs to the fallen one, Lucifer. I'm going to prove that. And then I'm going to prove that the Illuminati themselves admits, it, admits this. And that have been pulled out from the Illuminati. That in their secret circles, in their secret societies. That they call on the Tetragrammaton. That's the name of their God. And they worship their God in open. Now when they get up into high Kabbalah and sorcery. They invoke the name in their circles of sacrifice. They'll never tell you this. See, the fallen one don't care if you follow him in ignorance. As long as you follow him. See, the Most High got one, one name. The fallen one or Satan have many. So you might hear this when in circles. Well, what difference does it make with, with, uh, with God's name? He have many names. Okay, the Asians may call him Buddha. The Arabs may call him Allah. The Europeans may call him God. But all in all, he's still the same God. That don't apply to the God of the Hebrews. That applies to the gods of the Gentiles. Why? Because at the Tower of Babel, when the tongues were split, all nations went in their particular areas and the languages were split into 70 languages. And every one of those nations which were not of the seed of the chosen, which was not of Eber, each seed took their language into their particular lands and continued to worship Ceramicus and Nimrod. Of course, they couldn't communicate with each other because the tongues were split. Genesis of the 11th chapter. So yeah, the names they received while they was building the tower, while they was building uh, uh, the Tower of Babel, the names would sound different in the earth today, but still it's the same God they received when they were working together against the Most High in the beginning, in Genesis. So that's why they are similar in their worships. Because they took the worship of Ceramicus and the worship of Nimrod and Talmuz into their respective areas. 
Of course. So their, of course, their God would be in different languages. Their God was Satan. He was the God of Nimrod. What we're saying is Eber, through Peleg, down through Shem, down through Noah, down through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the patriarchs, that the Most High kept a clean lineage that his son would come through. And that eventually, when Israel mul multiplied as a nation in the land of Egypt, and came out of Egypt, a great multitude after only 70 souls walked in, that the Most High revealed his name before he delivered the children of Israel. He delivered it to Moses. Why? Because all the other nations had gods. They were already calling on and sacrificing to, even the Egyptians. But our people needed to know, the children of Israel, who was their God? Who, who was delivering them from the hand of the Gentiles who was using their God to inflict pain, suffering, and destruction? on his people. So the Most High had to separate himself. You understand what he had to do is he had to make a distinction between him and all the other gods. So you cannot say today that everybody is worshiping the same God even though they're saying it in different languages. The Most High made it clear so that we could not get this confused. And he gave Moses his name. Now. If there was no difference, then the Most High would not have told the patriarchs, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He would not have given Moses a distinction so that our people would know that he is the God separate from the Egyptians. Every other God in this earth, besides the name that we want to, we want to give you tonight and prove it, every other God you call in on in this earth is Satan. Everyone. We're going to give you the research tonight. And I'm going to tell you. We caught a lot of flack from this. And it, you know. Of course we're going to catch flack from our own people. That comes with the territory. You can, you can teach truth all day. Or whatever the case is. You're going to always get flack from your own people. <laughs> Who did Christ get flack from? The disciples. So that rolls off your back when you're dealing with truth. Okay, but some of the biggest flack came from those who seen that we were cutting through and we were bringing some serious information that they didn't want the people to hear. You understand? So we put our lives on the line. We put ourselves on the line to bring forth this information. All right, and we're going to put it all out tonight because listen. It, the truth must be revealed. We must come out with this truth, bring it forth, so that our people will have what they need to break free and know that the Most High loved them throughout existence. He loved you since you were born. He loved you, and He revealed the information. He used these different people in, in your life, but all in all, He loved you enough to reveal Himself to you. So we praise the Most High for that. So without further ado, let's go into the information.